everyone, Ephanos here from Pokemon Showdown, and today I won't be showing my face, oh, lol. <laughs> anyway, today we celebrate one of Pokemon Showdown's milestones, and with that, uh, Camomons is now part of the other metagame of the month for this month of October, and therefore we don't have to rely too much on anyone you know for test matches. Uh, so today, I have here some people from the Camomons Council to give us the developments of the metagame moving forward, and today, I will introduce to you uh, the metagame leader himself in the hills, along with Andy Boy and Chasm. Um, hello, guys. Uh, I'm guessing this will be the first time to pull up a podcast like this, and I'm actually super grateful for this to have taken place today. So, may you give the viewers at home a small introduction about yourselves? Okay, you go hey. first, tell us. You're the leader. Okay. Hey, I'm um in the hills. I I'm the um Camelmon's leader. Um, what? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I <laughs> yeah. You, you, play, you play the meta game. You yeah, play the meta I, game and lead the meta game. That's all. That you yeah, know. I play Camelmon's. Uh, do some other OM stuff. Ooh. Um, Come on, boys. Yeah, all new right. mod, crazy. <laughs> All right. I'm Andy Boy. I was also on the. I think I've been on the Gen 8 Camomons Council since the start of the Gen. So you think? I don't know. Take that as you will. Yeah, I, I think I don't know. I don't. Know. You've been <laughs> on Council since of... Gen 7. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. I've been on Council since Gen 7, but we don't play Gen 7 anymore, sadly. And so here we are in Gen 7, well, Gen 8 in Camomons, and um. I guess the only other major Camomons achievement I've had is that uh, I think we've only had one. Have we had more than one Camomons tour this gen? Did we have two? Did we have the one that in the hills headed, or was that a Gen Seven Camomons? We, we have two, two Gen Eight, uh, okay. Gen Eight tournaments. Uh, actually, the first one was last December. Uh, the one without the, that was pre home. That was pre home. Um, where Chasm was the finalist yeah. there, as, uh, as my memories, uh, you know, my memories in there. <laughs> yeah, Maple won. Oh, the Dogs won. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maple, yeah, he's Maple now. They yeah, he's in Maple, Maple now, yeah. Well, yeah, we had two. So I wasn't aware of the first one, but the latest one was, like, pretty recently, and I, I, I won that, so that was fun, I guess. Yeah. Chasm and the Hills team to win it, so... <laughs> So, so it was it was a team it was a team win it was a team win they built the teams and I used the teams and I won. So they're... Yeah, at least the Camelmon. It's a mem. At least now it's a member of the Camelmon's council who won the tour. <laughs> so that, yeah, it was the, it was um... a council win. It wasn't my win. You guys you guys won as well. Like <laughs> I wasn't even contributing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, you you hosted the tour, so you were, that was your role in the tour. It's loser who's the odd man out, and also loser who is not in the call. So. <laughs> well, at least he's old. That's true. There he is. There he is. So, next up, Chasm. What's up? Hello. I am. I. I am your friendly priority spammer, constant spammer, and finally first, first counter. Passer. Passer. You tell me. Uh, I have to like a lot of like styles and camo. Even with your best camo. Is is it a little choppy? Even though Gen Seven stuff that's okay. People very good like or they just okay. Always have the best. Uh, we apologize for some technical difficulties or chasm not having not having his, <laughs> <laughs> with his choppy voice classic and everything. British internet right there, boys. <laughs> it's classic <laughs> British internet. Oh dear. Anyway, uh <laughs> But yeah, um... Hopefully they I, heard that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, uh, I would like to properly introduce myself this time. Uh, I'm actually Aphanos. Uh, actually, well, I'm Aphanos here. Um, one of the, well, the most recent appointee to the Camomons Council. That was last April, around April, May. <laughs> uh, and then, if, as my, you know, as I've, I'm, I'm already a self-proclaimed a camel mass meteorologist for exploring, for, for exploring lots of you know lots of lots of stuff in the camel mass meta game, most like most especially weather, and given the given the situation about the camel mass meta game in itself, and I was like, you know what, I'd like to lead lots of projects where to make this camel mass team alive, so that's why I'm here. So, with that, I'd like to thank you guys uh, for sharing some of your introductions about yourself. And today we're going to, you know, at first let's go let's go have a recap of what the meta game is all about, uh, especially with all the updates. So, I would like to ask, uh, I would like to ask for anyone here, uh, just to let everyone, uh, everyone at home know what Camomons is all about. Please share. Okay, sure. Um, hopefully I do a decent job with this, but um, Camomons <laughs> has to do with uh, basically, a, it's a typing based OM, so you'll see other OMs like almost any ability um, or Mixed Omega or Stabmons, where they're, they're based around a certain mechanic of the game that is not explored outside of another metagame, so Stab mons has to do with like moves where any mon can learn, you know, the a move that fits into its stab move pool. Um, almost any ability, obviously, a Pokemon can have almost any ability except for the super broken ones like huge power or pure power and stuff like that. Um, and Camo Mons is a move based OM, so uh, it, it's also kind of move based, but it's also typing based, like I was saying earlier. So it, it's it explores <laughs> what can happen with Pokemon when they um, have a dramatic change in their. Uh, primary and secondary typings. You, can, I guess, you can have some singular typing camo mons, but it's usually you want to utilize both for this part. So, um, it's a really interesting and fun mix-up because some Pokemon that maybe not may not be that great or not that thoroughly explored or used in uh, normal standard meta games can. So Pokemon that generally have really strong abilities and especially really strong move sets um but may have some really bad typings that held them back maybe only one typing or um just just generally a bad use of typing as well really can shine well in in camel once that's part of the the fun and you can uh utilize stuff that well, Euphanos is calling himself the camo mons meteorologist weather can shine in camo as well because of the fact that you can run uh, rain team any pokemon that you want can can be water type or any pokemon that you want can be electric or flying or grass type so you can help to shore up some of the weaknesses that rain teams may deal with um by having a stronger type or or a stronger um yeah stronger type distribution so it's 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 interesting in that way and that's really what makes uh makes it appealing to me at least and a, a fun Mix up in terms of playing the game and uh, just the Pokemon meta as a whole. So uh, thank you, Andy. Um, essentially, Camomons is uh, is one of the recognized meta games from Smogon that uh, that essentially changes a Pokemon's type by virtue of its first two moves in the move slot. So, for example, if you uh, if you have an Espeon, all right, an Espeon who has Rain Dance and Dazzling Gleam on the first two on your first two slots. Then it will become a water fairy type, and it's simple as that. And it's just because of the change of mechanics in uh, the change, that simplicity of the change in mechanics, it actually changes the complexity, the entire complexity around the around the meta game. And hence, the meta game that meta game is extremely different as compared to the uh, to the official overused meta game that something that we're patterned on. And given those metagame updates, uh, <clears throat> just to let everyone know, uh, we note uh, we noted that uh, Heracross has been recently banned in the it's the most recent ban 
in the Camel Mounts meta game just because of you know uh, its speed uh, and its and its usual normal fighting, normal dark or normal ghost typings thanks to Chasm <laughs> uh, and and the official OU meta game actually has uh, let's say. The official OU metagame has banned Cinderace and Magirna to the Ubers metagame. Uh, but in Camel Mons, those two Pokemon are actually playable. Because uh, I, w I actually wonder why those two Pokemon were, uh, you know, weren't as, weren't as deemed broken as compared to the official OU metas. Well, we can talk about it for sure, because I oh. think it's an interesting discussion point. Yeah, for sure, but... We just don't uh, oh. directly go by what OU says. Yeah. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. Thank God. I get. I mean, yes. It's actually because of you know, uh, because of the t uh, the policy, I guess. Yeah. Um, it, hasn't it been renewed like uh, just this generation, right? Yeah. 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 yeah it's a Gen Eight thing. Yeah. In Gen Seven, we had to abide by the OU ban list. So if a Mon went in OU, it was going to go in Camo, regardless of how good it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. So I'm think I'm trying to think of examples of stuff that like I I, I mean I guess Magirna. I don't think Magirna would have. Well, I guess, Magirna did never get banned in Gen Seven. What are some What are some mods that got banned in Gen Seven? Zygarde. Like guard. That's well, true. Like, I was mad about, about that for a while. I was mad about that for a while. Zygarde was very good in Camo, but I was still that was debatable. Still upset but, like, about that. I think yeah. we could have unbanned it, but we just didn't have a council until. Way yeah. too late in the Gen to unban Camo, Yeah, you think Camo's in a rough spot now. Man, you should have seen it in Gen 7. <laughs> <laughs> Since, you know, I joined I joined Camo Mons in the tail end of Gen 7. So, I didn't see too much of an, uh, you know, didn't see too much of an issue. Sadly. Good times. <laughs> but yeah, I... <laughs> I okay, that's besides the point. I don't, want to, I don't want to brag too much about it. But anyway, uh... But yeah, uh, just to let everyone know, uh, son, uh, the Pokemon that are playable in the OU metagame that are banned in the Camel Mons metagame include Heracross, uh, Kyurem, uh, Zero Aura, oh wait, Melmetal's not, oh uh, no, Jacobish is it there, Shedinja oh, and Hydreigon. Man, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those are the five, right, so far? That are playable in uh, OU. There was, I wonder. If there was one more. Shedinja. Yeah, Shedinja just mentioned. I think he said Shedinja. Oh, he did. Okay. He's just he's reading directly off the thread. I'm assuming. So yeah. So they should all be there. All right. So yeah, uh, those five Pokemon are not playable in the Camel Mons mana game just because of their, uh, because of the certain types that makes it. Uh, that makes it too much for the tier to handle. So yeah, here it goes. So now that we have the ladder, uh, we have the ladder already for you know just because it became other meta game of the month for this uh, for this month of October. Um, what are you looking forward to? Like, uh, have you thought of some? Have you thought of some things that you want to that you want to show off against uh, against everyone in the field or something like that? I mean. I'm not. I don't. I don't have any specific mons or texts that I'm like thinking of that I want to use on the ladder yet. But the most excited I am for the ladder is the fact that obviously there just is one because when we had a ladder during the um, the suspect, we quick banned Heracross, so we didn't have a suspect for that. But um, what did we suspect, Hills? Do you remember what we suspected Dracovish. before? Dracovish. Okay, Dracovish. Yeah, when we had the Dracovish suspect, we were OM of the month that that month, so it was the perfect time to run a suspect because we had the ladder right there to to utilize that and it was a ton of fun like I, um i was I, I was i would just like uh hang out with a couple friends like maybe kata or jira or a few other people who also wanted the ladder and were interested in the suspect and we would just ladder and have a good time and uh it, it was probably the most fun laddering experience i've had in oms this generation so far so if if this month is anything like that I'm obviously super excited because that ladder is just like a really a really fun recreational value for me. I just hop, uh, come home, hop in the ladder, and have a good time. So having a ladder for a good OM like Camomons um, right now is super fun in general, in my opinion. Yeah, I feel... Uh, I, 
that I actually feel Camo must be super fun. Uh, like this is the one meta game I, that I wanted to go back to, especially with this generation that has been, you know, it has been deemed repulsive by many due to, you know, due to multiple factors. Dexit being a major contributor to it, <laughs> right? Like it's something that you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Camo Mons is like. A glimmer of hope, uh, I would say. It's actually a glimmer of hope. Anyway, in the hills, would you like to share what what you're excited for in the in this Camo Mons meta game, given that you're the leader? Um, yeah, this month's super super exciting with um the Crown Tundra DLC dropping midway in the month. Yeah, it's both good and bad, honestly, because I feel sometimes that earlier in the month might be irrelevant by the end of the month but one thing i'm really excited to use is something that was from the dlc one um edition that i never got to use last time we had a ladder which is rillaboom mm. um, That's true. yeah it's really cool pokemon in general i'm just excited to use it yeah i think ground grass is ground grass is yeah. Ground grass is nice. Yeah, ground grass and gra- grass fighting are both fun to use. Yeah, take notes. Like ridiculously good at OU with a single typing. So when it has a secondary stab for like a strong move like superpower or high horsepower, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Take note, guys. Earthquake on grassy terrain uh, is not uh, well. Just a, just a slight advisory. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah. Earthquake yeah. will lose its power under grassy terrain. Okay, just for everyone's information. But anyway, uh, let's proceed back there. So it's very interesting that you know Rillaboom is one of the you know one of actually one of the prominent threats in you know Camomans at the moment because because of the grassy terrain and grassy glide gaining priority and everything. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually adds another dimension. Yeah, the grassy terrain in general, you mean? In yeah. Terrain. Yeah, it's yeah, really terrain, fun. Terrain-based stuff is interesting. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I've been trying to build around um, grass fighting Rillaboom and pair it with uh, Ghost Steel Magirna, just because Magirna appreciates like grassy terrain and um, weakening earthquake and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. It's been like the meta and almost any ability right now is like grassy terrain plus plus uh, both defensive and like offensive Pokemon that appreciate grassy terrain. Uh-huh. Um, and just, it's just like a really, really good mechanic to have into play. So I think you could carry some of that over into camo and it could work oh, really yeah. well. Especially because Rillaboom is a very good setter. Like the side yeah. terrain in DD kind of sucks. So it's yeah. like hard to make that work right now. Once, once yeah. Lele comes in, that's going to be stupid broken. But <laughs> Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to show Lele and Coco is projected. I think Lele especially could definitely get banned when that thing comes especially out. Especially if that it gets expanded in Yeah, that's so stupid. <laughs> that's such a stupid move. Oh. Force, Psyshock, Focus, like, like fighting uh, Specs, fighting Psychic Lele was already probably a top... Well, you can debate it, but top five, I think, pretty definitively breaker in the meta. It was just extremely hard to switch into that thing if it was clicking the right move. Like, obviously, even Chansey gets smashed by Psyshock and stuff like that. And then Expanding Force makes it even better. So I think, I yeah. think it could be banned for sure. It seems really broken. <laughs> yeah. So we're now heading to, you know, uh, we're heading to... We're transitioning towards the DLC, too, with the Crown Tundra DLC. And uh, actually, before, before I'm going to ask what I'm looking forward to at the moment uh, given we have the ladder already and and there are already developments in you know developments in the other meta games department so with that I'm actually looking forward to have uh, Kamama's Iron Chef projects although uh, it will be live on YouTube and and speaking of YouTube uh, speaking of live on YouTube uh, I have already tried to bridge communities and you know uh Small and a small advertisement that I have already a Discord server wherein you uh, you can sign up for you know you can sign up for the Iron Chef uh, for the Iron Chef project that I'm doing 
it's more of a and then probably I could expand it to the rest of the camel mods to, to those people who wanted to get their hands dirty on the camel mods meta game. Uh, so I have a Discord server to have a you know uh, a rather small pilot runs uh, here and there and uh, and then hopefully with that with that kind of success I will be expanding it throughout the OMS uh, through the other metagames community and that's one and another project that I'm thinking of at this moment uh, especially with those with those kinds of developments uh, I'm looking forward to a Camelmon's Ladder Tour oh, that could be fun yeah, I'd be down for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, be... yeah. Uh, but please, <laughs> give me the chance to play. I don't want to host lots of things anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, would you would you be trying to would that be like a forum tour or would that be like just a I don't know just a Discord tour thing? Um, uh, for um the Iron Chef would be a Discord only tour. I, I mean a Discord only project, but the, for the ladder tour, it will be a forum a forum wide one. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's cool to hear. I will definitely be participating in that. I really like ladder tours. It's, uh, th that's definitely not the case for everyone. I've heard a lot of complaints about ladder tours, but I like laddering, and I think it's fun that like you actually get rewarded for laddering besides getting points, because obviously that's not really. Yeah, yeah, I'm the other way. The only it's... reason I like ladder is just because it's like a fun, casual place to do stuff. So yeah. I'm different in that sense, I guess, but <laughs> ladder tour does sound fun. Yeah, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, especially as well. like, if we don't have. That I pick up on my own. Yeah, actually, especially we don't have much of a major tour, like, we don't have much tournaments running so far, apart from the the Isle of Armor launch tournament that I've, lo that I've hosted earlier. But yeah, uh, let's just let's just hope for the best that you know Camel Mons becomes a permanent fixture in the other meta games department, and that we could turn that uh, we could turn that uh, ladder ladder tour into fruition. Yeah, that's one thing. It should ha it should happen eventually. I have faith yeah. it'll happen eventually. It's just a question of when, and obviously when. Yeah, when and up. how. Yeah, yeah so there's some stuff that just needs to be ironed out. Yeah, it's all of, it's all just in a matter of when and a matter of how. We've been waiting for a while. We've been waiting since the start of the gen when we were hoping we would be part of the you know the permanent. Yeah, when we were listed sure into the permanent. permanent. And yeah, uh, feels bad. We could have put also you know Camelmon seasonal, <laughs> just so it. Oh no, that's never happening. I mean, that has never happened. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of sad. No, there's <laughs> too many. There's only three seasonals right now. Yeah, so they're only mega, mega AA and B each get seasonals. Like Stabmons is part of the permanent ladders, but they don't get a seasonal for some reason. Yeah, so NFE as yeah. well. Oh yeah, NFE is true. NFE kind of has its own thing though. I almost yeah, they know. do. They do so much. They do a ton by themselves. So I don't even think they need us to give them a seasonal. Yeah, honestly, honestly. probably disagree with me, but that's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, they, I'm sure they'd appreciate it, but they don't need it. They have so many other tours that they can do. Yeah, they have their own player. Yeah. Whatever it's called. And actually, uh, another another thing we're looking forward into are like some other projects. Like uh, you know, I've seen you in the hills, like done uh, OM matchmaking. Yeah. Yeah, we could have that, or we could have some form of uh, you know a team building bazaar. Like there are some people who might want to showcase their Camelmon teams in there, and that would be that would be entirely great. Such as. Projects like those would be would boost the would boost the morale of the you know would boost the morale of the meta game itself. Yeah, for real. Um, it'd be nice if more people posted in like the OM Bazaar because it Is feels that, like I honestly did not even know that was a thing. Up until yeah, the there's only eleven posts on it. Well, yeah, I think I think the biggest reason for that is because meta games keep shifting and. Oh, yeah, that that's one, but I was thinking the biggest reason is why, like, in the past it seemed like bazaars like that, people always posted all their post, like, tournament teams, like in OMPL and World Cup and stuff, and now, when they have their own separate thread, people just don't post. Yeah, that, ever. That's At least I sure don't. I always post in the post thread. And yeah, I don't mean fair. to jump the gun on, on, on World Cup, you finish, but I think that's honestly, like, the, the biggest 
second that Camo is going to have in terms of activity um, after OMPL. Assuming Camo is part, you always assume with World Cup that well, OM World Cup that is. You always assume with OM World Cup that it's going to be, um, it's going to have the same rotation of metas that OMPL has. Now they could switch that up on us this year, which would kind of suck. But it, fun fact is, it's never been the same as OMPL. Wait, really? Am I wrong yeah. there? Yeah, it's surprising. Like, it's always been... Oh, I, I remember Stabmons was included when it wasn't included in OMPL. Yeah, and then the but year after, it was... Um, they added Tear Shift the year after. Tear Shift oh, yeah, in right. OM World Cup? But this year, it should be the same as OMPL. Was Camo, Camo was not in OM World Cup the first year either, was it not? It wasn't. It was AG, yeah. it was 1v1, then yeah. the, four, <laughs> the four main OMs. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so I guess I guess I'm guess I'm very wrong in that aspect, but I always you always assume that they're going to be the same rotation just because of how how the OM leaders have been about policy so far, where they like you know AG is probably not getting it and stuff like that. So yeah, you always assume that Camo is going to have a slot in that tournament, and if so, that is by far the biggest activity that Cam that's definitely the biggest activity this year that Camo once saw was during OMPL. That was when I saw. Obviously, yeah. a lot of people messing around with that metagame and really, really digging in and trying to learn, you know, and that's how <laughs> yeah. it's going to be. Like, it, 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 where people take World Cup seriously in the UM community. Like, it's definitely... Yeah, it definitely is. There's, 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 there's a lot of effort that goes in that tournament. So if Camel Wands is in there, then I know for a fact that I, myself, will be really working to, to get on top of that. <laughs> Same, <be> here. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Yeah. We all will. We all will. So I mean, it's it's a big it's a big event. It's coming up too. It's 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 gonna November, be around the corner. Yeah. DLC two comes out. Yeah. Yeah, which is very uh, which is going to be an interesting uh, you know interesting get up. And now uh, with all these added out, uh, we're going forward to you know uh, we're now going to the DLC one, uh, the Crown Tundra DLC. So. We have now noticed there are there are lots of Pokemon. Like how many of these? <laughs> how many of these? Is it's it's mostly legendary. But... Yeah, there are lots of Pokemon in there. Yeah, so which Pokemon uh, are you looking forward to seeing in in the camp uh, that would make? Uh, what that would make a, a significant impact in the Camel Mons metagame. Um, one thing for me would be Cresselia. Oh, Cress is nasty, dude. <laughs> I hear it gets stored power now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No. Sounds terrible. Can dude. we not have a double Cresselia? Things could have been Oh my god. So around. It was it was very very difficult to stop when it just had the standard old calm mindset. That mom was a demon to deal with without store power. I can't imagine how bad it would be with store power. <laughs> would Cresselia be bad? But we'll see. <laughs> but I, I would not be surprised. I'm not gonna like jump the gun or anything. I was <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not convinced, but it would Question be about how like easily it could fit stored power. But if it yeah, finds exactly. a way, it could be a problem. Our types are pretty good as well, so that's like one thing, but yeah, I don't know. It's just so bulky. It sets up so easily, and it's just like impossible to kill once it starts boosting. I don't know. Yeah. It sounds really hard to deal with. Yeah. So, Latios that... sounds terrifying. Yeah, Latios yeah, sounds terrifying. Nasty plot. It's gonna be terrible to all. Yeah. Nasty. Well, I don't think it's getting nasty plot, but still, even yeah, it, just spec or just something. Great, yeah. Exactly, just a regular old set is like a lot. Of, it gets such amazing moves, so yeah, there are always such good typings that it has access to with Levitate. Levitate's a really good typing in camo, as we all know. So, that is yeah. true. Uh, the the Pokemon that I'm the most interested in are the Galarian, Zapdos, and Articuno because competitive and defiant are pretty good abilities, and they're obviously brand new. We don't know what move sets they get, and we know what their primary typings are, but in camo they can be a lot of different stuff. Yeah, and their signature moves we don't know the base power, but what they do sounds pretty good. Um, especially Zapdos's, it sounds like it's Fire Lash only fighting type, where it lowers yeah. defense uh, when it makes contact. Which that out of Defiant Mon sounds really hard to deal with because 
in metagames where I've dealt with like fire lash type mons, the primary way to deal with that is intimidate combined with pivot and hard hitting moves. And if you have defiant to block intimidate and continue to lower defenses with that fighting move, that sounds horrifying to deal with. I think it's going to be really good. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know about the Moltres. Moltres uh, Berserk is not quite as good of ability as competitive or defiant is. So I'm not quite as sold on that guy because abilities are such a huge part of making mons good in camel mons. But Berserk isn't terrible, I suppose. Like it, it could be used. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'm worse than the other two. Sound much stronger, especially the Zapdos one. That yeah, sounds really, really hard. Good. That sounds really good. <laughs> Maybe it's out of you know balancing stuff. You know, like Articuno isn't that uh, Articuno in itself isn't really that good, but. We have the Galarian version and the Galarian counterpart, which is, uh, which is, hopefully going to be good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Arcuno was a terrible. I think um, heavy duty boots that, uh, is also going to be huge. That's also true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Gip and Moltres is coming up. <laughs> One of my favorites. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I would, I'd rather use uh, the, the the Cantonian Moltres rather than the you know. Rather than its Galarian counterpart, because it looks uh, kind of redundant given its move pool and its ability, I guess. But I'm. Have you seen? Have you seen its move pool? Like, does it? Have we seen this yet? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay. But yeah. Uh, has anyone here tried the Ultra Beasts from last gen? In you know. Yeah. Like, um, the ones that were allowed, at least. I mean, Cartana was yeeted out of this tier so fast that mom was. No, it was not. Fast. It was not. All right. It should have been yeeted. Out. It, it should have been, been yeeted out of this tier extremely fast. That's what Jordan told me. But like, obviously, part of the problem with Gen Seven was that they didn't have a council or a tier leader or anything, and the one person heading up the tier did a very bad job with it. So mons that should have been banned were not banned fast. So they had, they were wallowing in the brokenness of Cartana far longer than they should have and it like they they saw how nasty that mod was it was yeah. horrible I think so it would be I interesting have no though, faith because one of its bad. biggest um issues was it had return to use like normal oh, that, type yeah true so without yeah, true. that I mean even even without that it's gonna be broken but like slightly yeah, less I don't know I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> but no, it's definitely not staying for long at I don't all. Think if at all, a lot of them are sound very good to me. Um, Buzzwool was always pretty solid. It was never like amazingly broken or anything, but it was pretty solid. Yeah, um, I think it's unexplored. I think Fair was banned. Fair was banned, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that'll stay. It's oh yeah, Feromosa. <laughs> right. Circuitry yeah, was Cir cool with like Arcatry electric cool. grass or electric fair. Oh my so, gosh. Uh, Celos wasn't really used that much just because it has one of the best typings in the game as is, so there's no need yeah. to really go outside of that. Its move pool's not that great. It had like oh, I guess good. It had like a sweeper set with like ground DM Z. That was I'm interesting. Just fights, man. Poison and fire sounds pretty strong. Pretty strong. Yeah. Ugh. Speaking of which high spite ceremony but strong crap. Spike Sparamosa, he says. Oh, Spike Sparamosa. Um, oh man, that does sound good. Yeah. Spike. Yeah. Spike. Does this spike? Yeah. We can't hear you well, Chasm. I'm sorry. It's just how it is, but we can't hear you well. It's Hopefully, we can hear you better. Uh, yeah, it's kind of choppy though. But anyway, looks like uh. Dragonite. That ice fighting Pharaoh. Oh, true. yeah, that's a disgusting typing. <laughs> oh my god! I just don't think. Wait, it has it has a lot. It has access to a lot of really good covered moves with like, and Beast Boost is an underrated ability. That snowballs pretty fast, especially if you have a fast Pokemon like Pheromosa. Pheromosa uh -huh. is very fast, so like, if you struggle to revenge it. It's gonna be really difficult to take down. So yeah, I don't yeah. Think so. I I suddenly remember when it comes to you know last generation when I when I first came into you know I when I first came into the Camo Mons meta game by virtue of the Cam Yu Yu Mons <laughs> we're using uh we're using Yu Yu Pokemon but in the Camo Mons but with Camo Mons mod inserted and I was like you know I tried uh Magic Room and Memento Yuxi <laughs> alongside uh 
Not illegal. What does magic room do? <laughs> uh, magic room, uh, magic room cancels out the, uh, you know, it cancels out the, the effects of those items for five turns. So that means, uh, magic room, then memento, and then scarf Nihiligo in, and then we'd, use, we'd just use charge beam or special attack boost. Uh, I can't remember if it's scarf or specs, but still I could use charge beam and then gaining for the speed boost. Yeah, that sounds. Oh yeah, it does get. It can get speed boost with beast boost. That sounds pretty cool. But yeah. Uh... I remember using Hydreigon in that tournament? That was a fun time when you know Hydreigon was legal in this format. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Example of a mon just absolutely broke. Broken open by nasty plot. That's crazy yeah. how much that changes. But yeah, uh, it doesn't get set up. Yeah. Right. Given those, um, well, when, um, we all see. Uh, we might notice Dragonite is also appearing. Uh, does it have a chance of getting? You know, given its history, last generation as one of the Pokemon being banned, would you see it? Uh, would you see it the same way again this generation? Yes, I think Dragonite will yeah, get banned definitely. with like ninety percent certainty. I am yeah, very, very convinced. No Dragonite was actually actually there's one the two percent comes from Z moves because Z moves were extremely yeah. good with Dragonite. That is one thing that I that I can say about that. But I don't know, man. Like Dragonite had so many good typings. Multi scale was so broken with those typings. It had all the moves it need, possibly needed to succeed with setup, and it sounds like better Kirim. It really does. It sounds like better Kirim. And Kirim was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, Kirim. <laughs> Yeah, Kirim was horrible. So yeah. I don't really want that, especially with multi-scale and actual setup, like and, and really good uh, offenses to begin with to, to complement that setup. Uh huh. Kirim, yeah, I don't I don't know. It sounds it sounds atrocious to deal with. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah, Kirim is. I I've used Kirim as a dragon dance and given coupled with pressure, it really um, uh, given its buck as well. No one can yeah. stop. No one can stop Kirim. That's why we ended up banning it. And yeah. uh, and Dragon Dance is actually very good on that mon and Camo mons because it can run a lot of physical stabs that you know that work with the typing and stuff. It's yeah, serious. especially Iron Head, I would say. Yeah, yeah. The steel, the steel flying set with Sub and Dragon Dance was by far the best, and it was really, really difficult to stop. Even if you had a quote unquote check, it didn't check it sometimes. It was so yeah. stupid. Just roosts and subs over and over <laughs> stalls at all your PP. It's like. Legitimately a gross mod to deal with. I, I hated that Pokemon. It was, you know, it was so dumb. And Dragonite does the exact same thing, only just utilizes multi scale instead of pressure. Um, it's really, really dumb. It, it's yeah. legitimately really hard to break that Pokemon when it is A, erasing a weakness in electric when it roosts, and then B, when it just has sub and multi scale and can get back to full HP very often and stuff. It's it's really hard to break that mod. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, uh, and given those, uh, given the DLC to um, the Crown Tundra DLC about to release anytime soon, will um, and then given we have five Pokemon who were banned from the Camomon's metagame, such as Zira Aura, uh, Heracross, Shedinja, Kyurem, and Hydreigon, uh, do any of these five Pokemon might have another chance to be? To be reintroduced to the meta game given DLC two. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, for sure. I think I would personally unban just about everything except for Shedinja and Kyurem, personally. Oh, oh! Okay. You the... never unban Shed because that's just like a fundamentally stupid Pokemon with changed up typings. Like the whole point of that Pokemon in the first place is that the typing is weak to a ton of combos, and so if you can make it. A bunch of really hard to hit typings, and it'll be like ridiculously difficult to take it down, especially with boots this gen. It's like really stupid. So yeah, uh, obviously Shed never gets unbanned, pretty much no matter what happens. But uh -huh. um, yeah, I I'm super down to unban like almost everything at the start of the DLC, just because this is the final. This is the final changes to Gen Eight that we're gonna get, um, unless they're hiding something from us. But you just assume not. they are. Yeah, so, no. yeah. This is this is this is what we're getting. This is this is our final cast a Pokemon and so yeah. we can we can unban everything see what's busted in this and then get rid of them for good and then they're gone but but we do have the opportunity to, to use them you know? yeah I think it's a great um, opportunity uh, to read a great opportunity like 
with the likes of Darmanit and Galar, we could have that. We could. Oh, would we? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, that one, that one too. That one too. That one. That one's not coming back. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> let's not let's not get too out of hand here. Um, but but you know, for the most part, I'd be down. I'd be down to try Kiram. I'm mostly with Hills, where I don't think it'll stay. But I mean. I don't yeah. know. Maybe yeah. we can try. I I assume the Dragonite and stuff is going to be unbanned to start with. I just don't think that they're going to yeah. stay around. Like Faramosa, Cortana, Dragonite, all those guys will probably be legal to start with. I'd be surprised if we quick banned them from day one. We might quick ban them from like day two or three when we've been playing, yeah. but probably not from day one. We'll probably get to use them at least. The yeah, day yeah. One. That's pretty oh, much yeah. only going to be the box like box previous like cover legend. Yeah. But I think Zeraora, for instance, especially, I don't think that yeah. one will be busted at all. I, I think, think that was be, debatable at the time. I, that's what I'm saying. It was that was the hardest decision that I had in terms of bands. Yeah, Mel Metal as well. I think is worth. Mel Metal is yeah, that's true. That's true. Because it's just I'm, so slow. Yeah, Mel Metal. But, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, we could reintroduce yeah. Mel Metal into the field too. Yeah. Because it was once uh, Keldor. Yeah. In a way, yeah. it was slow and hits like I a think. Truck. Buzzworld does a really good job handling a lot of those type of Pokemon, so I'm yeah. interested. I, I, and, and I don't think I don't think it gets coverage that can beat some of the type combos that Buzzworld could run to fully wall it. So I'm like, I have faith in that way, I suppose. But yeah, I think it has Fire Punch, but like that's um, that's yeah. Yeah, but Buzzworld doesn't have to run a typing that's weak. Oh, it to, doesn't. But it doesn't get Fire Punch. No, it gets super powerful. Yeah, it runs like yeah, it runs like usually like steel ground it always wants to run a typing that gives it stab double iron bash for the most part and so like yeah. as long as you resist that and then don't aren't directly weak to one of the secondary stab types it can go for like eq or superpower you should be fine as a buzzable user so, yeah i don't know like steel flying or yeah. steel anything really steel thunder punch would, thunder punch could get you if you're still flying but yeah i know what you mean if you're faster you can just roost off the damage and stuff so yeah. i don't know are Lando T and Torrent T are coming back, correct? Yes. They should be, yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. pretty sure alternate forms were confirmed because they showed up with mm -hmm. Complete. Oh, really? Which yeah. can, I mean, which can Dynamax, by the way. Okay. Just, yeah, I hate that. I wonder if those Weather Trio can learn Weather Ball. Uh, the Thunderous or Tornadoes. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't mind Thunderous or Tornadoes learning Weather Ball. I would I would mind the Weather Trio learning Weather Ball. That would be stupid. Although, yeah. I guess they don't. Maybe they wouldn't. I mean, it would make sense that they would learn it, but it would be extremely strong. Uh, I'm, yeah. Zygarde will be really good. I'm ex I'm always excited to get Zygarde back just because I like I like normal type E speed users of speed control. That's something I really missed. Um, there's not yeah. a lot of good ones. Um, and Oh Dragonite is a really, really, really good one, but I don't think he'll stay around. But yeah. Zygarde is yeah, always Entei the one that was. Well. Oh, it's okay. true. Yeah, Entei, Zygarde, and, and Dragonite were the three really good ones in Gen 7. And Zygarde, I felt like, was banned unnecessarily because of OU. Um, Chasm felt that Zygarde was like really, really good. And it was. It was very good. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was. Uh, it's just because of the policy close. thing, yeah. I think non E speed sets were equally like. Yeah, like the coil like ground, ground uh, poison was yeah very scary. Yeah, coil sets and stuff was really hard to deal with. Uh, but yeah, I, I just liked I liked using band normal ground. That was a really really good mom. A thousand, yeah. although a thousand is a thousand arrows. A thousand arrows it is should be. Yeah, yeah, they confirmed like signature moves because I saw Oblivion Wing on your belt all. Yeah, oh. I do think I, I think I'm excited to use Zygarde. I think I think he'll stay around. He might not. I might be wrong, but I think he'll stay around from now. If Torrenti, yeah. Torrenti is already was already the best Mon and Gen Seven Camo Mons by the end of it. Um, I think pretty definitively. I don't think anything else really came yeah. very close after we banned Megalodeon. I mean Mew, like oh yeah, well yeah, Mew's like, always Mew. That's different. Torrenti say... was so good. So many different stuff yeah. that you wanted to. I do. think for that though. Z move was very huge on a lot of it, a couple of its typings. So, so if it if if it doesn't have access to Z moves and it doesn't get nasty plot, then I think it might stay. I think it, I would actually be in favor of saying it will stay. But if it does get nasty plot, I am pretty certain it's gone. No way. I'd be very very surprised. Yeah. If it got nasty. Plot. I hope it doesn't get nasty plot. I will cry. 
<laughs> yeah, that would suck. Because it would ruin a really fun mon. It's a very yeah. versatile mon. It's one probably one of, if not the most versatile mons in Gen 7 Camo in terms of what you could run the sets and the typings and stuff. And so it's really fun to use. It's very splashable. Yeah, but, I think um, it was one of the best Pokemon we had. Like, yeah, it I was think very healthy to have. Yeah, it, it was pretty sick. Uh, and it was such a dramatic... I mean, it was good in OU, but it wasn't camo good in OU. So it's yeah. one of the fun things about the Gen, 8 cam Gen 7 camo mods, that is. So. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting take there. Uh, so we're about to, you know, we're about to wrap up and we're about to wrap up in this uh, instance. Uh, so would you like to give some advice to those um, to those people who... Who wants to get their hands dirty in the metagame for starters? Uh, with what advice would you give to them? Well, I think Camel Mons <laughs> is a very, um, a very new user-friendly metagame because it's one of the metagames where you can just, um, I mean, you can't like throw throw stuff together and it'll always work. But it's like uh, whenever, uh, from my laddering experience, whenever I ladder um, AAA or any of the other ones like AAA, M and M, or especially BH. You see a lot of really trash, genuinely bad teams on low ladder, and people are just getting smacked around, of course, because their teams are genuinely inferior and terrible. That's not always the case in camo mons. You can run some really weird that mons that may even seem bad on paper, and they can end up working out. Like, um, you know, Jordan used a team with, like, Water, Ground, Specs, Cursula, and that seems terrible on paper, right? Like, normally if you just roll up with that on another OM ladder, it wouldn't work. But it works in camo because Cursula is really strong, and it has that coverage is pretty good. Um, and so you can run a lot of wacky stuff um, in camo. You can just throw stuff together, and it, it may work decently well. And you can learn what works and doesn't work pretty fast as well. So I think my advice, obviously, is the cliche, just hop, hop on the ladder and, 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 and start playing. But uh, my, I guess my other advice would be to um, actually look at the resources first, look at the VR. Um, if there's sample teams available, then take them out. Do, we don't have sample teams right no, now. No, not yet. We don't have yet. We, yeah, we, we, didn't yeah, we, we will have sample teams at one point. And when we do have sample teams, please use the sample teams first. Take a sample team of your choice. Try all the sample teams. Um, please, please play with the teams that are already made, okay? Um, just because it, it helps you learn um, the interactions of some of the best mods in the meta because you're using the best mods in the meta for the most part, or at least a team that's built properly. Um, and then you kind of learn how to play around common mods and interactions and stuff with a standard team first. And that's kind of how you learn the meta, I think, um, initially. So, mm. I mean, if, if your style isn't to use other people's teams and you want to build your own team, I would say at least look at the VR, try to get an idea of what's going on and uh, really learn quickly, switch up your stuff. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, at the end of the day, the the best advice that you can have to start any OM is to hop on the ladder and play. It's really that simple. This really doesn't need to be much more complicated than that. Yeah. yeah. What about you in the hills? Um, I think Andy covered it pretty well, but like, um, I think something that even I still struggle with is there's just so many options in Camomon. Sometimes you just kind of lock up and don't really like know what to do, and I think it's important to just go with your gut instinct when you're building <laughs> yeah you decide to build for yourself or check your again check the resources and worst thing you lose a ladder game like just hop on the ladder and try it out if you want to yeah um yeah. but yeah andy covered it very well yeah keeping you keep an open mind in camo though like for sure you keep an open yeah. mind you don't get locked in on the same stuff you can really you have a lot of freedom with building so use yeah. that yeah, speaking of open mind, uh, speaking of being open minded, that's what I wanted to say to to the viewers. Actually, uh, it's because uh, there are lots of nuances, there are lots of hidden gems that you can find in camel mounds, essentially. And uh, if you're if you don't want to use sample teams, just like what Andy said, uh, what I would seek, uh, what I would give, and uh, what I'm, what I would give to them is like uh, give something. Uh, if there's one, if there's one move, or if there's one thing that has caught your attention, if there's one Pokemon, one item, one move, one set, or whatever that is that catches his attention, that it catches your attention, uh, and build a team from there uh, with at least with some of the fundamentals that you have built. Um, yeah, team building fundamentals is one of them, and. Uh, I mean, if you have, if you know lots of team building fundamentals, and then you you have 
teams that brought up you uh, they have lots of stuff that has that has caught your attention yeah uh, you might have a team that might give some uh, at least a modest amount of success and that's what I did when I started in you know using the Cam Yu Mons tournament the last generation where you know I pulled off stuff like uh, I pulled off stuff like yeah, yeah I, I said earlier the magic room memento you see alongside beast boost uh, beast boost Nilego with choice specs with uh, garnering a speed boost and another one was uh, what's this Sticky Web Slurpuff alongside uh, Z Gravity, Necrozma. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and in Generation 8, even, I even pulled off an Onyx before before home started. <laughs> and where, yeah, I failed to map off. Excuse me? Yeah, the Onyx lead. You used what? You <laughs> used an Onyx? <laughs> yeah, I used an Onyx. <laughs> yeah, in the quarterfinal on? round of the. Of the tournament in the hills hosted last December. <laughs> Excuse me, what did you use on that? <laughs> like level one endeavor? I don't understand. Uh, no, no, uh, it's uh, Rock Ghost Onyx with Stealth Rock and Curse, which you know, um, good thing uh, given the DLC two content. Given Aerodactyl is now present. Uh, yeah. Given, um, yeah, given Aerodactyl is now present. I would use Curse. Mega, though. Exactly. Yeah. Mega Arrow was such a sick mon, and now he's not Mega. That's just <laughs> sad. But that's okay. He'll still be okay. Okay. Apart from that, yeah, uh, I would like to, you know, I would like to thank you, uh, Andy, and the Hills, and Chasm for, for spending <laughs> at, uh, at most an hour for this podcast. And with that, uh, I would, <laughs> Oh my gosh, dogs are barking. I have some background music for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, I if you if you like this content uh, that that we shared, uh, the Camel Mons Council have shared here, uh, please accent that like button, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Pokemon Showdown content. And with that, uh, along with Andy and the Hills and Chasm. This is Aphonus for Pokemon Showdown, and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay safe, guys!